For today, we're going to talk about plantar fascia, what it is, why it hurts, and why it matters. So please stay tuned guys and watch until the end of this video. All of the information that I'm going to explain here are important to the treatment on how we can ultimately end plantar or heel pain. So please stay tuned guys, watch until the end of this video. By the way guys, if you're new to this channel, I'm Gorby and I'm a physical therapist. My mission is to help everyone become pain-free and educate the world with regards to our human body. Welcome to the channel guys. If you're new here and you wanted to learn some exercises on how you can help your body to live a life that is pain-free, you need some exercise tips like manual therapy, movement exercises, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you won't miss out on anything. Okay guys, so our plantar fascia is a structure located on the underside of our foot. So it's on the soles of our feet. It's attached to our heel and it extends all the way to the five toes of our feet. Its main role is to transmit forces and absorb load each and every time you place your foot or your feet on the ground. So it works every time you stand, you walk, you run, you sprint, you jump. The plantar fascia is active in consistently elongating and shortening to absorb force and then to distribute that force all the way upstream to our body for us to move efficiently and move well. Well, now what usually happens with people who experience heel pain, specifically plantar fasciitis, the plantar fascia cannot withstand the load that it experiences whenever you bear weight on your foot. So one of the things that is commonly described as the main risk factor for plantar fascia is sudden change in activity. So for example, you've been sitting on your desk for a whole day working and then one day you decided to run, you decided to to do some extraneous exercises, a lot of weight-bearing exercises for that foot. And then the next day, you experience that heel pain. So it's one of the classic mechanism of injury with regards to plantar fascia pain. So another risk factor for people who experience heel pain or plantar pain is those people who have abnormality with regards to the posture of their feet. This is the second risk factor or some of the people who experience plantar fascial pain have some abnormalities with regards to the posture of their feet. And there are three types of posture for the foot. One is over pronation. One is a neutral. Second is neutral foot and then third is an overly supinated foot now for those who experience heel pain it's either their foot is overly pronated or overly flat or their foot is overly supinated in which case these guys have their arch that is really high so they have an, an increase in space on the inner side of their foot so whenever they bear weight you can see that space on the foot and if it's too high it can also cause plantar fascia pain or some of us connotate it as plantar fasciitis. So guys, if you combine those two risk factors wherein you have an abnormality on the posture of your foot plus that sudden increase in activity, there's a high chance, there's a really high chance that you will experience heel pain or plantar pain in your life. Now, there are also other people or there are also this type of demographic wherein they do not have that risk factor which is that sudden increase in activity but still they experience that constant unrelating heel pain. So some of these guys or some of these people, they sustain plantar pain or plantar fasciitis or heel pain over time. So meaning it's a cumulative weight bearing on your foot. So for example, you're working in a, a supermarket or mall wherein you stand for a long period of time. So each and every time your foot is there, like bearing your weight, even though it's not much on, the, on an activity, it's just you're standing there. If you add that like several days, several weeks, several months, several years, 
it could happen that your plantar fascia cannot sustain the load anymore and then it will experience that pain and discomfort it's a signal to our brain that something is wrong and that we need to do some lifestyle changes or modify our activity to relieve the pain that we feel okay guys so in summary those are the three main risk factors for people who experience plantar fascial pain or plantar fasciitis or heel pain so one is a sudden increase in activity two is an overuse or repetitive strain on the plantar fascia for example you're standing for a long period of time and then it accumulated for days years or months so it could be a risk factor for you to experience that heel pain and then the third one is an abnormality on the posture of your foot so you're either overly pronated or your foot is overly flat or you're either overly supinated wherein you have that high arch and then your foot is overly supinated. All right. All right guys, now let's talk about what do you exactly feel if you have plantar fasciitis or heel pain that is caused by your plantar fascia. So number one is you have an extreme sharp shooting pain during your first step in the morning. So it's a classical first step pain. So as soon as you wake up, and then you step on your foot, you experience that sharp aching pain on the sole of your foot. So sometimes it could be located in the inner side of your foot. Other times it can be on the outer side. It could be on the heel part. It could be near the toes. So along where the fascia, plantar fascia runs, you can experience pain there. So it's not just actually during the morning. So if you have a period of inactivity, for example, you've been sitting on your couch, for a long time and then you try to stand up and then put weight on your foot bang you will feel again that pain that plantar fascial pain that sharp shooting pain on your heel as soon as you bear weight on your foot and then as you walk forward or move along the pain gets better so that's a number one classic sign of plantar fascial pain or if you have a heel pain that is caused by your plantar fascia second sign is if you try to overstretch or lift your toes going up so it can create that extreme stretch or big stretch on the plantar fascia the fascia doesn't like that later on i will explain why okay so another symptom that uh, people feel or people who have plantar fasciitis feel is when they extend their big toe or lift their big toe up they experience that uh, sharp shooting pain again on the soles of their feet. So when you increase the dorsiflexion or the extension of your big toe, it creates that stretch on the plantar fascia which can cause or worsen your pain. So same thing, activities that will extend your big toe such as walking, walking upstairs, or running. So you will feel that massive, massive pain on your soles that you will stop it stop walking or stop running or stop going up the stairs right away because of pain some people also who've been uh, walking barefoot because there's no support in their foot they also experience that pain so those are the classical symptoms that people who have plantar fascia fasciitis experiences now there's a lot of things that could cause heel pain so it's not only your plantar fascia that can be the cause of your pain so which we will talk about on the differential diagnosis section of this series all right guys so now this is where it gets tr tricky guys so if you're still here in the video and you're still watching at this point in time so please like the video and um subscribe in the channel because this is a really bomb information that will definitely improve or influence your treatment for your plantar fasciitis so earlier i discussed what's the main function or why plantar fascia matters and then uh, second i describe the risk factors involved so why do people experience plantar fascial pain i also discuss the symptoms or what does it look like for you for those people who have issues with their plantar fascia now the next point i'm going to make is what is basically the plantar fascia what it what it's made of 
and how we can influence recovery or regeneration of that tissue. So our plantar fascia is made, it's a fascia and all of the fascia in our body is made up of collagen and hyaluronan. So same thing with our plantar fascia, it's made up of collagen and hyaluronic acid or hyaluronan. Now, plantar fasciitis is misconstrued as an inflammatory condition, in which case it is not. So more often than not, 80 to 90%, there's no inflammation on the tissue or on the fascia itself. So what happens is the composition of the fascia is degenerating, specifically the collagen. So whenever it tries to, to stretch, to absorb weight on your body when, when it bears weight. So what happens is there's deformation of that collagen and if it cannot sustain anymore the load or the weight that you give to it, it will give out. And there will be a degeneration of those collagen fibers. So that is what's basically happening on the tissue when you experience that heel pain. Now the second component of the plantar fascia is hyaluronic acid or hyaluronan. It serves to... So let's go back first with the collagen. So collagen is the one responsible for absorbing shock. It's a tensile structure so it can absorb shock. It can transmit forces all the way up to our body so that we can move efficiently. For example, when we walk. Now, hyaluronan or hyaluronic acid serves as the lubricant so that your plantar fascia can slide whenever you put weight on it. Hyaluronic acid is, has been also found in the studies to be responsible for the tissue regeneration or angiogenesis, meaning the formation of the new fibers of the collagen whenever it's, it experiences that degeneration, that hyaluronan or that hyaluronic acid is the one responsible for the regeneration. It's also responsible for nociception or decrease in pain. And it's also responsible for aggregating fluid or water so that the tissue can rehydrate and recover. So mainly, this hyaluronan or hyaluronic acid has been found inside the synovial fluid. So for example, on our knees so there's a lot of hyaluronic acid there or hyaluronan by facilitating this specific chemical we can influence actually healing on our tissue now there are some techniques manual therapy techniques to facilitate production of this type of chemical and it's actually the key one of the keys towards improving the tissue regeneration of the plantar fascia so if you like this video guys please click that like button uh, down below for this video you you may also opt in to subscribe to the channel because i will be uh, going through a series of content for plantar pain on how you can truly get rid of that persistent heel pain so we'll be talking about differential diagnosis exercises manual therapy treatment some medical management diet your weight proper shoes plus everything that you need to know or that you need to do for you to be able to stop that heel pain right now so see you guys on the next video